In this episode, we're going to talk about three ways to give application in our sermons. Your sermon really only works if people know how to apply it, if they know how to use it. So in this episode, we're going to look at three simple ways to make sure that your sermon has handles on it that people can grab onto and use in their lives. If you think about your sermon like a jacket that people can put on and wear out of the church and go live it out, that's what this episode is about. Really, what we're preaching for in general is life change. We want people to take action. And today we're going to look at three ways to simplify that process because it can get a little bit complicated in our minds because it's so important. We can tend to put a lot of emphasis on it and really stress about it, but you don't have to. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to do it in a simple way, three different ways to do it. If you're new here, this is episode 92 of the Preaching Donkey Podcast. My name is Lane. It's so great to have you joining me today. We like to help preachers communicate their messages better so that lives can be changed, so that you can maximize your preaching ministry and your leadership capacity. If you want to know more about how to do that, go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days, pick up your free 21 day guide to creating killer sermons. It's a three week, three step process that will walk you through how to create and deliver a compelling life changing message. So whether you've been preaching for a long time and you're just looking for new ideas and something fresh to get some inspiration, or if you've just started preaching and you're going, what do I do? How do I do this? There's something in there for you, and it's totally free just to say thank you for stopping by. That's preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. All right, so diving into three ways to give applications in your sermons. This is an article that I wrote over at Preaching Donkey in May of 2016. One of your jobs as a preacher is to teach your listeners how to live out the truths you preach from Scripture. Now, this statement seems like it should be well agreed upon. <laughs> but if you've ever been to a church that does not value application and merely values just teaching the word for the sake of transferring knowledge of the word, you understand the difference between those two approaches. In a previous episode, I talked about the difference between preaching and teaching. You can find it on the YouTube channel. Preaching is itself a form of motivation towards some type of life change, some type of repentance, just me, which merely just means a changing of mind. Teaching, on the other hand, is a different way of approaching things. Teaching is more about knowledge transfer and gaining knowledge than it is about changing you. Now, teaching can be life-changing and preaching can transfer knowledge, but the actual purpose of the two are different. The purpose of teaching is to transfer knowledge that may result in life change. The purpose of preaching is to change lives and that may result in knowledge transfer. So when I say one of your jobs as a preacher is to teach your listeners how to live out the truths you preach from scripture, understand that is not just one of your jobs as a preacher, it is pretty much the job of a preacher is to show your listeners what this is what it looks like to live out the truths that you preach, that I'm preaching from scripture. So if your goal is to simply educate or inform your audience so they can be more knowledgeable, then stop preaching. Preaching of necessity requires application. We're preaching for life change. We're preaching to make the written word become the living word in people's daily lives. But the application of the sermon is often the most difficult to execute well. I talked about this at the beginning of the episode. We all know it is vital to invite people into application. At the same time, this can be a massive challenge for those of us who are, who are more inclined to teaching over preaching, those of us who are more inclined to let people kind of draw their own conclusions. And I mean that in the most positive way. Like we, we don't want to presume to know everything. So we kind of allow people to make their own conclusions. And all that is still relevant. And all that is still applicable. And you can still give people application that they could apply your message to. The application part of the sermon is often the most difficult to execute well. I once listened to a sermon where the preacher concluded with a list of 13 ways to apply the message. 13 <laughs> ways. Um, 
most people struggle to remember 13 different truths from one sermon, much less apply them. He was well-meaning, but the buckshot approach doesn't work. So application, I've seen this uh, over and over, where application is treated as this also (laughs) idea. Like, here's the message, and also, here's a list of possible ways to apply it. Applying these truths to our lives. Let's talk about it. Here's one way, here's another way, here's another way. The problem with that approach is that if you divorce the bulk of the message from the expectation of application and people are, are invited to kind of listen passively and just learn the truth of what you're saying. And then at the end, you throw in, here's a couple of ways that you might want to apply it someday, or even you might want to apply it this week. But the message itself was just knowledge transfer and really didn't have much in the way of action. Then it, it's very hard sometimes for people to connect the dots, to go back to the sermon in their brain, the last 25 minutes, 30 minutes that you've been talking and say, oh yeah, this truth is connected to that application. It's far better to do it in real time in the moment. And I'm going to show you how to do that as we w- keep walking through this. With that said, drilling down on just one application seems too narrow. You have a varied audience with varied needs. The text has one meaning, and hopefully your message can be summed up in one big idea or bottom line, but the way the text can be applied to someone's life is innumerable. You can't list every possible way it could be applied, but you want to get your listeners to see for themselves how it applies to their situation, and that's really important. What you're trying to do is get people to internalize the message such that they begin to see themselves living it out in their context. I've discovered that it's often best to simplify it in my mind. When I unnecessarily make the process of teaching application too complicated, it tends to be unhelpful. So I've simplified it down to three categories of how I give application. Keep in mind, these are just categories. There's a lot of freedom within each one, but I like to have the basic framework. So I wanna share them with you here. So number one, ask a question. Number two, extend a challenge. And number three, give examples. So let's go through each one. Number one, ask a question. Application does not always have to be a to-do. Sometimes application can be a to-think. Think about that. So very often when we hear applying the message or application, we think I need to think about what people need to do with the message. And that's a good way to think about application. That makes a lot of sense. But sometimes the action that they're to do is more of a changing of mind, which requires thinking and considering and a a belief change. So an action or an application doesn't always mean they're going to go do something, right? They're going to go, you know, call a friend or they're going to go give to charity, but they're going to consider their heart. They're going to search their mind. They're going to do something that involves thinking. In other words, your sermon may be the catalyst to get someone to question the way they've been living, their worldview, their daily practice of walking with God. Asking a question is a great way to get your listeners to do some introspection, to look inside themselves and see what they find. Very important. For example, if you preach a sermon on obedience to God's word, your question could be, what's one thing in your life that is keeping you from obeying God? Asking questions as a general rule throughout your sermon is very vital. So even if you're not doing it as a way of giving application, questions are just extraordinarily powerful. Stopping and asking questions throughout your message is such a vital way of bringing other people into the discussion, right? Sermons are monologues, generally speaking. It's just you talking and they're listening. By asking a question, by asking the question that they might be asking, you're kind of inviting them into that monologue and making it more of a dialogue and you're giving them a voice. So you want to make sure that you're asking relevant questions that matter to the sermon, to the text, to the application, to the people. Your preaching team can help with that because there's a lot of wisdom in a collection of people that might know how people at different stages of life and Uh, different situations in life can relate or will relate to your message. Number two, extend a challenge. Some sermons more naturally call for a specific challenge. You have different listeners with different personalities. Some people like to be called out and challenged, lovingly, of course. 
Some people are saying, hey, step on my toes. It's what I need in order to take action. When I'm preparing, I try to ask myself, what if any challenge could be extended in the sermon? If it flows naturally, I'll do it. So say you're preaching on the importance of giving regularly. Your challenge could be give something, get started, try it for three months and see how God is faithful to you. So a lot of people, when they're talking about generosity, they'll do like a three month challenge. You could offer a challenge to read your Bible every day for a month or offer a challenge to memorize the first chapter of the book of James. You could offer a challenge about inviting three neighbors to church this month. I mean, it could be any number of things, but extending a challenge, doing it church-wide could be a great way to give a tangible next step to your message. And finally, number three, give examples. This is my most commonly used method. The beauty of this approach is that it can be done throughout the entire sermon. This is what I talked about at the beginning. Application is not just a list of things at the end for people to mull over in their head and try to connect the dots back to it. You can give examples through the whole message. You can give application through the whole message. I never wait to the end to give examples of how the message could be applied. Instead, in the introduction, I build tension by giving examples that touch on as many different types of situations as possible. Then in every point and during the conclusion, I apply the message to more examples. So this doesn't come across as a list but a natural flow from point to application to illustration and back. In other words, throughout the entire message, you are showing and demonstrating how this is going to, how this could look, how this should look, how this might look if you were to put it on and wear it out of here, if you were to apply it. How do you give examples? Use your preaching team during your preparation to think of how your message will land on as many different people as possible. So again, if you don't have a preaching team, I have a episode all about what a preaching team is, how to create one at all different levels. If you have a big staff and you can just require people to be at the preaching team meeting, great. If you're a a bivocational preacher with no staff and it's just you and you're part-time, you can do it that way. Uh, And I, I talk about the ways to gather a group of people there. And then what do you do at your preaching team? We talk about all that, why it helps so much in this process. It's all in there. Just look up the episode on how to develop a preaching team. In your message, describe people's situations to them as if you completely understand where they're coming from and what they're going through. This is so important. As you give examples, you don't want to be out in left field with something that no one relates to and something that no one, it's not the life they're living. Really understand where your people are. This is why it's so vital to utilize a preaching team and get real feedback from real people about how what you're saying is coming across. And this is a process. Some examples might be, you're here today and you're wrecked with guilt from what you did last night. Draw near to God today. You've never made a habit of giving and you're hesitant to get started. What if today were the day you decided to trust God in this way? You're married, but you have someone at work that you find yourself attracted to more and more. You haven't crossed the physical barrier, but emotionally you are connected. Give that to God today and make yourself accountable to a friend before you go to work tomorrow. So when giving examples, it does not matter that they don't apply to everyone. This is something that I think is a massive, massive thing to grasp and to understand. You can speak to everyone. You can use the, you can use your, you can say you and your, and it not apply to everyone. Because if the examples that you're using are relatable, then they'll be applicable. If they're relatable to everybody you're talking to, in other words, it may not be their situation, but they either know someone who's in that situation or they see it as a realistic possibility that could happen to them or someone they know, that's good enough. The key in these examples is to get people saying, oh yeah, that could happen. Oh yes, I could see that. Oh, okay, so if that were happening in my life or in someone else's life, then this is the action that I would need to take. Again, it goes back to application. The reason why we're giving examples is we're trying to help people connect the dots between what we've taught, what we're teaching, what the scripture says, a real situation in their life, and then how to apply this truth from this message to this real situation. And when all of that clicks in someone's mind, application becomes way easier. When giving examples, it does not matter that they don't apply to everyone. They don't have to. They will likely apply to someone, and if they're varied enough, they'll hit close to home with others, even if they don't describe their exact situation. 
The point of giving examples is to get people to think about their lives and how they need to respond in some way to your message. So ask a question, extend a challenge, give examples. Those are three ways that you can get started even this week with making application and giving application in your sermons a much easier way to do it. So even this week, if you started with, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask more questions. The next week you add on, maybe I'm going to extend a challenge. The week after that, you say, oh, I'm going I'm to try to think of five or six different really sharp examples that I can use at this point in the message. If you do this and you kind of practice it week after week, application becomes much more natural. So you start to ask those questions as a natural flow of what you're teaching. You, you know when a challenge extension makes sense, right? You're like, oh, in this message at the end of the series or at the beginning of this series, this is when this challenge is going to be extended. We're going to talk about it each week throughout the message or throughout the series. And then giving examples can, can needs to really just be a, a part of your message flow at all times because people need to see what it looks like. They need to feel it. They need to think about it. They need to put themselves in the situation. So those are three ways to give application. There are many more, but if you want to start using these, you'll be well on your way. Go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. Pick up your free guide to creating killer sermons there. I'll see you next week. Until then, remember, if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through you, and he can speak through me. We'll see you next time here at the Preaching Donkey Podcast.